What's going on you guys? My name is Slim. I'm here on my boy m 40s channel. First and foremost, thank you for having me here. Papa Robbie, I appreciate it. Uh, what I have for you guys today is a new format, uh, Mech Knight Invoked uh, deck list. Uh, Robbie, you definitely wanted me to feature this. I know right now the entire world is in quarantine and there are no real tournaments, no locals going on. However, any of these decks you see in real life, you can build online. And the beauty of online is there is no budget online. You can literally just afford any of the cards. The reason why I'm showing it to you in real life is I just thought it'd be cooler just to actually show uh, the real cards since, you know, I know deep down we all miss that. But I'm going to get into it for you guys. I personally feel that Mech Knight Invoked is definitely uh, a fantastic deck, especially at the start of a new format. Uh, it already did get a top at the Luxury Card Gaming Tournament, so that shows that the deck is still decent, you know, even before the new format change. And I think that with Master Rule 5 in effect now, being able to spam multiple Macabas or have multiple fusions and not be limited by your Link Monsters is awesome. I think the Link Monsters are still really important in this deck in particular, but I think that there's a lot that uh, this deck has to offer, and uh, hopefully you guys do enjoy it. So I will get into it for you guys. It's a very, uh, like, streamlined list. I didn't want to overcomplicate anything. Again, we're in the start of a new format, so... So I believe that in the beginning of a new format, uh, to keep it as simple as possible is usually the best way to go. And then as the format establishes itself, you know, change your card choices and ratios uh, uh, adequately based on uh, how the format goes. But yeah, so standard triple Alistair, one card combo. You guys already know uh, one card Macabre now because of uh, All Mirage and Secure Gardener. You guys should know the combo. You just make Secure Gardener after the All Mirage, and then you just play Invocation and banish away the Secure Gardener. The Alistair, add back the Alistair, putting Invocation back in the deck, and then you have a Macabre kaba with alistair and you got it off one card so this deck obviously wants to go second but when you're forced to go first it gives you another play for the mech knights i've got triple purple and triple blue so usually i'm a huge advocate for only two copies of blue the reason why i'm playing a third copy i'm actually playing a higher mech knight count than i usually do uh is because we are playing the trap world legacy secret and i'll explain that when i get to it we're also playing morning star for that exact reason so we have the one indigo and the one yellow uh i chose yellow over red just because i feel back row decks are still gonna be super prevalent so i felt that having this card it does come up a lot being able to uh just pop your opponent's card in the column a lot of times i don't see it coming and you do link the mech knight away a lot so it does come up a decent amount so that's it for the alistair and the mech knights i believe it's eight mech knights so a little higher than usual but you guys will see with the with the trap why we decided to up the mech knight count uh, since we are going second deck, we do want to break boards. I'm playing two copies of Gamma Seal. I felt that Gamma Steel was the best call. Uh, some people like Ghidorah, some people like the other Kaijus. I just always like Gamma Seal. It's the weakest one, it's the easiest one to get over. And even though it has no real synergy with the elements because we're not playing the water uh, invoked, it does just have that extra just, you know, break a monster board and then just start uh, clearing the problem because it's just 2200, so it's pretty easy to run over. And what I love about this is it creates a column as well. So and you can decide where the column is, so that's super important. Uh, then the hand trap. So this was kind of the hardest thing to decide, you know, in a new format, you don't know what are the best hand traps. You kind of just have to test things. And I was testing uh, different ratios with hand traps and I kind of just realized that I wanted to have more of a variety. So I decided to do a lot of two ofs. You may not be a fan of this, but I can tell you right now, if you're trying to play uh, every possible hand trap, two ofs are kind of the nice way to go. It's a fine line between seeing them and you seeing them too much and then not seeing them enough. So hopefully that makes sense. But I got two copies of Ash along with two copies of dd crow in my opinion i feel like these are still the best hand traps salomon great is everywhere especially if you're playing online a lot of decks are uh you know graveyard based and i think dd crow is fantastic it's one of my favorite hand traps one of my favorite cards in the game being able to just crow anything is amazing uh really good like i said against salomon great really good against orcus once they get their new support people are already playing them online you're gonna see it ash is just the most generic hand trap i felt that it was one of the best ones to still play it is a hard ones per turn but it's fine just uh DD Crow just, I felt, filled the void that uh, other hand traps don't. Uh, you can play stuff like Skullmeister, you can play Ogre, you can play Veiler. There's so many different hand traps you can play. I personally just like DD Crow at the start of this format, especially knowing that there's so much graveyard uh, related decks. Uh, also, because we're in Master Rule 5, I had to put, play two copies of Nibiru. I felt that Nibiru, at first, I was not super uh, confident with it. I felt that, you know, before Master Rule 5, I felt like, okay, this card can really be hit or miss. You know, you play it against Salad, it's good, but if they have Will, they can just play through it. A lot of decks know how to stop before the fifth summon. A lot of decks can make Appalooza. A lot of decks can play around Nibiru. But I think that this card still warrants being played. At worst, it's a light for Makaba. It's just able to, you know, clear an entire board when the opponent just overextends. And if your opponent, 
likes to overextend and doesn't want to you know doesn't really fear nibiru if you have it you know you just kind of blow them out you can see it in, in the past like spirals they overextend you just nibiru them salad overextends without will you nibiru them heroes overextend you nibiru them especially with the unrestriction for like synchro decks and a lot of decks that like to spam being able to drop nibiru is just fantastic so that's why we play it and then this is, might be the most controversial hand chat believe it or not it's too phantasme but to be honest i was one of those people that felt that this card wasn't going to be that good as soon as april 1st rolled around little did i realize with salad being in the format and a lot of decks still doing what they did last format you have to link summon whether you have unrestricted uh fusions xyz's um etc phantasme still came up because most decks still have a link monster they want to summon they still have a line of play they want to do and phantasme can be that card that can not only put a body on board it can help fix your hand and it becomes a threat because then they can't really target any of your guys so phantasme i think is actually a very good card this format uh again the format is still establishing itself and another thing i liked about phantasme is phantasme lets me draw into these other hand traps in tandem with itself or what the deck likes to do so being able to do that i felt was super important I like just the two of split on all of these. I just I originally was playing the Gamma Driver package. However, I noticed a lot more that I wasn't getting Gamma off as much, especially, um, you know, if you do get it off, it's good. It does clear a problem, but a lot of decks are fine. I felt like I was no usually doing it on the normal summon. And again, Driver is one of the hardest cards like you know you draw it like you just really don't want to draw it and i know that's not really a good excuse but some people just don't like playing gamma driver i felt that this way we play a streamlined hand trap lineup that none of them are ever really dead so i think that these were the best ones to play like i didn't want to have a dead gamma in hand or a dead driver in hand and then not be able to do anything with it so that's why i played this hand trap ratio but that's it for the monsters spells pretty standard stuff we've got the three meltdown to get alistair and then the three copies of invocation i don't play book of the law uh i notice more decks like have gotten away from that and i think that's correct book of the law while it does have the flashy otk potential the card is usually a brick being opening it doesn't really do anything invocation at least if you hard draw it you have alistair you can still do your play if alistair gets stopped i would rather see invocation in my opening hand you know than have to normal summon alistair and get stopped and not being able to play so i play it and also because i play desires so i feel like if you play desires you have to play three copies of invocation and then this is the reason why online tournaments are amazing because budget doesn't matter but i am main decking triple lightning storm i feel lightning storm is absolutely necessary in this particular deck you are going second deck you need bomb cards you need blowout cards and i personally feel that lightning storm is one of those one of those like really just powerful bomb cards because while it's basically a harpy's feather duster it is also a raigeki that a lot of people forget like if you can you know bait negates and then literally lightning storm away the whole board is fantastic it's obviously insane against back row decks and i feel that back row decks are going to be pretty prevalent because most people are going to want to play them like if you get the extravs on the reprint like being able to just uh you know play like a guru deck or an ultra guys deck a lot of players want to do that the only thing holding them back was pod and now that it's going to be uh, a reprint it's gonna be easier to get so i think we're gonna see more trap decks so uh lightning storm i think is just an essential evil uh, like absolutely essential in this deck like you need to play it because you're going second deck and you want to break board so that's why i play it and then just the already aforementioned the two copies of desires the card's amazing it's still a plus one um you play a lot of three of so you can afford to play it um yeah i wouldn't play three i think two is fine uh this deck is actually 40 cards i got it to 40 which is something i haven't done in this deck in a while i usually play like 41 42 but i wanted to make this deck as consistent as possible for you guys so uh yeah two desires was fine and then i do play the one ofs i still play the instant fusion of course the mind control and i play a mystic mind and a terraforming to go with it so this is okay this is an essential evil this format it still is uh i hate this card i think this card needs to get banned it's just disgusting but you need it if your opponent's playing it and you're not if you don't have an out to it you lose they don't have an out to it they lose you know you kind of got to play that terraforming obviously searches meltdown but worst case scenario can ca catch mystic mind and mystic mind as much as i hate this card it can buy you the turns you need to get into the game so that's why i play this so the one-ups i don't need to explain mind control mind control is still broken i think this card is amazing i think every deck should play this like this card was at one in like 2012 i think and everyone's still played it so this card's great uh just being able to take a monster being able to break boards is fantastic set it special mech knight mind control it's insane so instant fusion i know a lot of people don't actually want to play this card anymore people have talked to me about playing the predator plant uh 
the Anaconda. I just don't really like that. This is the only like real fusion card that we play uh, for that. And instant fusion to me is okay. If I see it, I see it. I don't, I don't. The only card that really is in here is a, that kind of takes a spot is the Thousand Eyes Restrict. But I still value the Thousand Eyes Restrict because being able to instant fusion out a Thousand Eyes Restrict to either bait and negate or take a monster, create a column, and then uh, being able to reuse it with Cross Sheep is insane. So I still warrant that. I'm still playing it, and I think it's fine. Like it might get cut in the future, but for now, uh, we're still playing it. Like we also have extra targets. We also play Kaliga and Raijin. So this card, if we see it, it's live at pretty much any point of the game. So that's why I still play it. Like I would not, I would not cut it yet. Like I think the card still needs to be tested more, but I think the card was so good in the deck last format. Like even if it's at one, we're still gonna play it. And then for traps, I just play the three evenly. Obviously, we're going second deck, we just break boards. And then uh, the World Legacy Secret. So this card is a monster reborn for level five or higher. It also reads that negate any monster that's in the same column as a Mech Knight. Basically, you combo this with Morning Star. You search this, and then you bring back Indigo Eclipse or any of your Mech Knights. And with Indigo Eclipse, you can move them around to any column. So basically, you can make it to where you just negate all your opponent's monsters as they try to activate so that's why i play it and this card's insane shout out to my boy johnny for putting me onto this card we played this card in the uh, uds as well as the 3v3 ycs and the card was insane so that's it for the main deck it's 40 cards shout out to richard you already know that's dead extra deck for you guys uh double macabre very standard i wouldn't play three i don't think it's necessary this card comes up a lot like just being able to make it uh i've never made more than two in a game usually the games don't last that long so i think two is fine um, very easy to make one card macabre now with Alistair, so that's great. Uh, one Purgatrio, same thing. I don't think you need more than one. You only make it when you're going for game. Uh, this with Mystic Mind is disgusting, especially if you have multiple Alistairs in hand. You can just wipe a whole board and just OTK your opponent. Uh, one Raijin, uh, card standard. It's instant fusion target, and it's also just really good. Very quick Book of Moon effect is fantastic. Uh, I know that there's not a lot of wins that are that we put we don't really play any wins in the deck We're not playing Joel and Lockbird, but uh, I feel that any deck that puts a wind on board It could come up also being able to instant fusion it out does come up in some situations So that's why we play it one Kaliga standard this card is just great really good against Shadal uh, Ending on Makaba Kaliga is insane. So we still play that the already aforementioned thousand eyes because of instant fusion That's it for all the fusions and we've got our links. So our links are standard. We got the All Mirage and the Secure Gardener, which is the one card Macava combo. Uh, this gives you the best option going first. Uh, cross Sheet, probably my favorite card in the extra deck. This card is nuts. Just being able to, uh, you know, just OTK your opponent, like being able to bring back a guy, being able to make Boral Sword is crazy. Of course, the Mad Invoker, being able to search multiple invocations if it comes up. It also is, it has its name as Alistair while on the border in the graveyard, which is super important, especially when you don't see Alistair the Invoker, but you do see Invocation. If you can find a way to Mad Invoker, you can still make a Invoke play. So I love this card. And then Morningstar, it searches the trap. It has a very cool effect that people don't read. If you attack it in a, col uh, in a column that's not its own, it can't be destroyed by battle. You take no damage. So none of your Mech Knights do. So people, everyone forgets that. Like no one reads this card. Uh, I used to under value this card and it was a mistake. I think this card is fantastic. Obviously it's amazing in pure mech knights, but I think this card is also warranted in mech knight invoked along with the trap. It's just fantastic. Being able to search indigo off blue, discard uh, indigo to search uh, secrets with, with this card is just insane. And then reborn the secret, reborn the indigo and just move all your guys around and negate everything is fantastic. Then just standard links, uh, Phoenix and Unicorn. I think they're both needed. If you notice, we still play a lot of links because I think links are really important. Like, I didn't want to bog down the deck with more fusions when I don't think they're necessary. I think the link monsters are still more necessary. We don't synchro in this deck, so that's why, you know, we're still playing links. That's why I said I think Phantasma is still really good. Uh, another one of my favorite links, the VLS link. This card comes up a lot. You make it a lot more than you think. And this card is fantastic against trap decks, especially if you boost it to 45. It's unaffected by stuff. They can't destroy it. it it's just an amazing card overall. And I think this deck makes it uh, one of the easiest. And then just Boral Sword because you go to K your opponent all the time with this uh with cross sheep you literally um you literally just make a quick otk and i think it's i think it's fantastic i think every deck should still play this card i think this is probably the most essential uh extra deck monster that you would play this format but yeah that's the deck you guys again i want to thank robbie for featuring me on the channel hopefully you guys did enjoy hopefully you guys will head over to my channel simply slim ygo some of you might remember me as slim x team symmetry if you've been around uh watching robbie's channel for as long as i have you guys might remember that but yeah uh, i do a lot of stuff over there deck profiles a lot of meta breakdown i go to a lot of events when there are events and i do a lot of the coverage with my with my brother Asian persuasion so i'm sure you guys have seen us around or heard our voices behind the camera uh whatever there's deck profiles being done at events but yeah that's what we
we do. I also started a new series on my channel uh, where we test uh, the hands of any deck in the meta and just, you know, kind of talk through every possible play. And we actually did the first episode on this deck. So hopefully uh, you guys will check that out as well. But yeah, again, thank you, Robbie. Keep up the great content. I hope everyone enjoyed the deck. Like I said, I know this is an in real life deck profile, but you guys can build this deck online, tweak it to your liking. And remember, there's no budget online, so it's fantastic. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.